Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medics. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the SOE Medical Backpack. And you guys have been asking for a review on this one for a while now. So besides running Medical Gear Outfitters and making YouTube videos for you guys, I still am in EMS uh, part-time. But I am one of the paramedics on a SWAT team. I'm also one of the paramedics on the search and rescue team. So I get to use my stuff out in the field. Super excited about that. Uh, this backpack right now has been used twice in the field. And I've had no complaints with it so far. So before we look at the contents, let's take a quick look on the outside right here. Got it labeled my paramedic tag. I took the TMP course, which allowed me to get my tactical paramedic uh, certificate from SOAR Rescue last year. Great course if you're in the field looking to practice. Uh, I always have a hard time finding my Sharpie. So I just went ahead and slid on the outside right here. That way I know where it's at. Do have some Molly attachments here. So if you wanted to attach something extra, like another pouch, some more tourniquets, you can attach some stuff to the side of it here. On the side, you have two straps on either side that allow you to kind of really cinch it tight to keep it nice and neat. I did go ahead and put a pair of trauma shields on the outside, and I used the NAR uh, leash holder here to keep it secure. On the back here, you have nice straps you're going to hook in. No padding, but honestly, this pack doesn't weigh a whole lot. So both times I've used it in the field, I haven't thought, man, I wish I had some padding on my shoulders. Uh, it wasn't a problem. So uh, they've been nice and secure both times I've been using it. So the backpack itself is made of a 1000D Kadur fabric. It's 16 inches tall, 11 inches in width, and is 6 inches deep. So the bag itself unzips completely and just clamshells open, which I like that. When I'm using it, it just lays open and then I can just kind of close everything back up and fix everything nice and neat later. Um, so it gives you plenty of storage space to open it up and take a look at it. So we'll kind of break down each pouch individually for you. Um, all of these are Velcro lines. You can pull them loose if you need to, hand them off, or whatever you need to do to design to move them. So we'll kind of move in a little bit closer here and take a look at them individually. So this first pouch right here, this has all my medicines in it that we're going to typically use uh, besides my narcotics. I have to get those. I can't just ride around with those. So we have some oral glucose here. I have some Narcan. I have Epi. This is going to be like for anaphylaxis, allergic reaction. Benadryl, same thing, combination there. And then some Zofran for nausea, people from throwing up. I'm a sympathetic puker, so if I can give you some medicine to stop you from throwing up, we can do that. This is a nice padded case, so as it's bouncing around, everything stays protected. So in these two large pouches right here, I have my airway and breathing. Here is my kind of like miscellaneous section, so we'll kind of take a look at it. All right, so we'll take this first miscellaneous pouch right here. Pulls loose. Another pair of gloves. I have quite a few eye shields right here. Band-Aids, like people, this is the most important thing. <laughs> uh, use a lot of band-aids and then have some of the NAR, the Talon gloves. So these are going to be the, the ones that come out really far on my arm. So don't really have to have full access to those all the time. These EMS nitrile gloves are what's most important to get to quick. So taking a look at the next one here, sharp container. So my IV supplies are over in this bag right over here. Uh, so that way none of the other responders get stuck if I'm using IV supplies, needles, things like that. And then I have a large pressure bandage right here in case I need it. I also have another pressure bandage over there, uh, but this is a large one. All right, so like I said earlier, these two pouches are for my airway and breathing. Uh, so we'll kind of take a look at them real quick for you. Uh, this is a bougie. It goes with my crack kit here. Uh, if you're in the and you're familiar with the bougie, uh, using that to emplace your ET tubes, this is for a crack. Same concept, really cool. This is my NAR crack kit. I've had plenty of training. I've done on cadavers, simulators, pigs. I've never had a chance to crack in the field. Hopefully I don't, like hopefully this stuff just expires. So there's that. A couple MPA airways for me. And then we have a tactical suction device. It's a turkey baster. So I can clear someone's airway. And then the tube for the crike. So cut, use a bougie, insert my breathing tube. So now we'll take a look at this bag over here. This can continue airway and breathing. Have some chest seals. Have a portable compression needle. Bag valve mask. Thought I had two needles. Yeah, two needles. And then a King Airway. So I can insert that if I need to. Bag valve mask. This is one of the pocket editions. So super small, adult, BVM. And then 
dual hyphen chest seals. So we'll slide over to this pouch right here. Now this is my trauma kit. This is my major trauma bleeding control kit, I'll call it. Uh, cat tourniquet, already staged, ready to go out of the packaging, super important. We have some escrow galls. My Israeli bandage, I already take it out of the first packaging, but I'll leave it in the second one to keep it vacuum sealed. And then some combat galls. So I can use the combat galls first to go into the wound, control bleeding. I have Esrol Galls as kind of a back filler. So this is my bleeding control kit right here. And then our last little pouch we're gonna go over. This is my IV supplies here. So have a BOA made by NAR. Uh, this is a great tool to use if someone's having a really hard stick. Uh, you clamp it down, kind of roll it down. When you roll it down, it really exposes the vein. So you don't have to use it, but it's one of those things someone's having, uh, they're in shock, whether that be vomiting or they've lost a lot of blood. This really helps get an IV started. So tucked down in there, we have just a regular IV tourniquet. We have some needles, some IV catheters. I've got some needles in there for my medicine that I have to give over here. I've got some IV fluid as a drip set. And all my IV support, start supplies there are secured in this pouch. Down here below everything, I have two SAM splints tucked away in case I need them as well. So I hope this video helped. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training. So for those of you who have watched this entire video and you're like, man, Skinny Mac is missing this. He's missing that out of his first aid kit. I have four in my truck. Different ones, different styles. So I probably have it.